come on up. Uh, I want to call him pastor. He was pastor. He's, he is a rep. He's an ordained minister. But because he's on the front line with CCV, you know, I wanted to address what was in the history and now what's present. And when I was praying about this, the Lord said, you need to get a hold of David. And I sent him a text. Now I'm asking everybody here today, hear everything he's got to say today because we will have to give an account for it someday. I know that God has put a word on his heart. I haven't heard it, but I know that it's going to sweep right behind what Wayne said and we are going to see a, a direction from God today from this man. Take your time. Amen. Let the Lord use you. Thank you, sir. Godspeed. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, my wife and I were here a while back. Um, who was here when my wife and I came several months ago? Okay. Um, I, I wanted um, I, greetings from her and from um, Aaron from uh, Center for Christian Virtue, uh, where I work. It's, uh, it's downtown Columbus, right across the street from the state house, and basically we serve as watchmen over the state. To, how many know Christians need a voice down there too, amen? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just so glad to be here. And um, pastor told me, he said, uh, Dave, if you, if you come to church dressed like me, I'll take you crappie fishing after service. But it's snowing out there, so he's probably not going to take me now. But um, I love him anyway, amen? It's political season, so a couple of lies shouldn't harm anything. And <laughs> uh, wow, what a word, um, yeah. Brother Wayne. I, uh, I do have a word today. Um, you know, when it comes down to, to government, I think I, I said this before, uh, government basically is simply a society's way of ordering things. How many like to play football or basketball or any kind of sports you know, to do so without any kind of boundaries is life without government, Amen. right? You know, and, it, and that sounds good as long as, you know, you've got the ball, but when the other person's got the ball and they can run all the way up into the stands and throw it and then just come back down and score a touchdown, you know, you're sitting there like, what? How does that make sense? How is that fair? That's life without government, right? And government is God's thing. Everybody say God's thing. God's thing. Politics is man's thing, but government is God's thing. Uh, and politics is man's way of getting their needs met within the context of one of three of God's governments. Amen. So you've got family government, you've got church government, and you've got civil government. And like I always say, I'm a father of four. My son around Christmas time would, would come and he'd want a Christmas gift. And, you know, Dad, I need another video game system. And I said, no, you already got a video game system. Right. Well, I'm going to pay you, you know, pay another $500 to get you another video game system when you got one last year. No. Does he stop there? No. no, he lobbies the next head of state, mom. He says, mom, you know, dad's, he, he's, he's, he can't, you know, he's just a jerk. He won't listen to me. He doesn't understand that this is a health care issue for me. <laughs> if I go back to school in January without this new video game system, I'm going to get beat up. <laughs> it's about health care. And he pulls on mom's heartstrings and she says, you know what, son, never worry. I'm going to uh, caucus with your father. And uh, between now and Christmas, the house will make a decision and we will vote according to whether you need that new video game system or not. Government is God's thing. Politics is man's thing. It's man's way of getting their needs and wants met within the context of government, family, civil, and church. And you all do it every day. We all do government every day. You do it on your job. You do it in the house. You do it in church. And hopefully we do it in society. Amen. And voting, guys, is basically just a formal indication of your choice. So whatever it is that you're trying to lobby for, whatever it is that you're trying, whatever need it is that you're trying to get met, that is your vote. That is your choice that you are making, and your voice is being heard uh, with that choice. Uh, real quick, I, I do want to share um, a word that God gave me right after uh, issue one. Uh, that vote was on a Tuesday. The Lord just began to deal with my heart, um, saying that basically this is not over. Um, and he really was sharing his heart with me. And I want to share that with you. Uh, the, I've not asked to do this. I didn't talk to pastors since the last time I was here. Um, but I've been from here to Nebraska working with the governor on what God has said 
according to uh, how issue one went down in the state of Ohio. Can I share that with you here in a minute? I do want to talk about Zechariah, uh, though. I mean, you know, Zechariah and Elizabeth, they were wanting a child. This is in Luke chapter 1. And um, they've been waiting a long time for a child. And the Lord says, you know, he sends an angel and says, hey, Zechariah, good news. I'm going to bless your prayer. I'm going to answer your prayer, your petition. You have been lobbying me for months and for years about this child. And good news is I'm going to give you what you asked for. How many knows that's good news? But Zechariah was afraid of the angel. And he said, how can I know that what you are saying, angel, is true? And the angel literally said, bro, I'm standing right in front of you. I'm an angel. <laughs> the Lord spoke to me, sent me to talk to you, and here I am. And, bro, you're not even going to believe me. And he said, the child that you are about to produce is so important. Even the smallest detail of the name that I cannot allow you to mess this up. And so you will remain silent until right before the birth. How many know we can mess a lot of stuff up with this? Right. And I know I know America says that you have the right to remain. Right. But not in the kingdom. <laughs> in the kingdom, when you, you know, God cursed him with silence. Because he was not willing to say what God told him to say. Right? And he was basically cursed for it. Until you get all the way down to verse 57. Now, Elizabeth, hold on, let me get my glasses because I'm about to turn 49 and I, I can't see. Now, Elizabeth's full time came to her for her to be delivered. She about to pop. And she brought forth a son, and when her neighbors and relatives, everybody say neighbors and relatives. When her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. Amen? That's a good thing. They rejoiced with her. All right? But they said to her, there is no one among your relatives who is called by this name. So they made a sign to his father, what would he have him be called? See, because dad's standing off in the corner quiet. Everybody's rejoicing over the miracle child. And everybody's thinking, oh my gosh, his name must be Zachariah because that is your firstborn son and everybody's doing it. But they're waiting for Zachariah's vote. But Zachariah can't speak because God didn't want him to mess it up. So he said, until you get your faith together, until you get your worldview corrected, you best not speak at all. Amen. Amen. But even that is a choice. But they said to her, there is no one among your relatives who was called by this name. So they made sign to the father. What would you have him to be called? And listen in verse 63. And he asked for a writing tablet. He asked for a ballot. He asked for a writing tablet. How many know when you get in that voting booth and you punch that button, you hear that. Your vote, your choice is being registered on the tablet right in front of you. And that goes to your authorities. This is my choice. This is my vote. And God forbid we don't have our voice there amongst all the other voices of our neighbors and our friends. Amen. Amen. And he asked for a writing tablet and he wrote saying his name is John. And so they all marveled and immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue was loosed and he spoke praising God. Just a couple little things right here. Number one, voting is giving us a voice. It is a curse when we don't use it. In issue one, it was a curse to children to the tune of 30,000 lost babies a year. Because the voice of the believer was one, silent, and two, false. 
They spoke against what God said about. Now, listen, if the name of a child is so important, how much more than the very life of a child with issue one? Amen. Listen, of all of those rights that the brother just talked about, none of them matters if you don't have the first one. Life. What good is your religious freedom? I get to go whatever church I want to this Sunday. So what if you're not alive? By God, my Second Amendment rights to carry this gun and did it, and I got mine. But who cares if you don't even have the right to live? If that won't stir the body of Christ to go up to the thing and ask for your tablet and push on the button, save the children, then what else will? This is where we are in the body of Christ. So Sunday, well, first of all, the election happened. That was a Tuesday. Um, We had been grinding at Center for Christian Virtue for like for a year. You know, we tried we tried working the state legislature legislature in, in January. We had issue one. The first one, which was to to raise the threshold to amend the Constitution, uh, that that was, you know, the first issue one. Then the second issue one in the fall was the, you know, whether we should enshrine abortion in the state Constitution. And I felt like I'm like, I'm still reeling from last year. I, 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 you know, I'm still trying to exhale and, and breathe because that was intense. And now I'm right back on the road trying to tell people what happened in Ohio and, and what God is saying. Um, we spent in, 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 in Michigan, I think I told you guys, uh, they spent a lot of money in Michigan, um, but they didn't really reach the church very well. And, um, and so we figured, man, if the church shows up, we win, right? That, you know, we, and so we spent more money, I think total on both sides of issue one, about $90 million was spent. Yeah, $90 million. And, um, and, uh, uh probably about, about half of that. We spent about half of what the other side spent so so we were just reeling Sunday pastor I'm in church I'm sitting on the front row over here and uh of my church and my church was like yours very engaged our pastor was very engaged um gave me plenty of platform for conferences and things like that I I love my my church family Eagle Rock but we're in worship the Sunday after the election and I just wasn't feeling right and and um I had been annoyed all week because, you know, everybody wanted to interview me and all the Christians were like, okay, let's end on a good note. And I'm like, for what? For what? If it's really about 30,000 babies dying a year, what are we excited about? What is the good note here? Right? Because I'm on your podcast, I'm supposed to be happy. And I mean, I was messed up. I don't know why they gave me like microphones and stuff. I do now though. But I'm standing on the front row next to my wife, and I said, baby, I just don't feel like this. Like, I just don't feel like like singing this morning, you know. And she says, baby, you know, why? And and, and everybody on on the platform was like, you know, God is still on the throne. The election didn't go our way, but God is still on the throne. He's still God. (sighs) Of course he's still God. We suck, though. We messed up, though. His people, like we do over and over again, failed. And we need to acknowledge that. And so I told my wife, I said, baby, I just don't feel like it. And I'm hearing the Lord say, don't let them just sing over this. She said, baby, our church was phenomenal. I said, no, 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 I'm telling you, baby, this isn't just me and my feelings. This I'm hearing God say there's something, there's a word for the the church in Ohio. So we can't just move on or we're going to be worse off 50 years from now. How many know we're worse today than when we started row 50 years ago? Where are we going to be in 50 years if we just keep singing over it? Kumbaya. Huh? I was tripping. So then I got another word. You know, don't let them sing over this. And I was talking about, I think it, you know, when the Nazis were uh, being on trains and they were being sent to the, the concentration camps. Uh, they said that the churches along the route would just sing louder when they heard the trains coming because the screams on the trains was distracting from what the preacher was trying to do. And so they would start praising worship and they would just sing louder over 
the trains and the screams. And the Lord said that Sunday, don't let them sing over this. The next word I get when I'm standing there, it's about the first song, the first song is still going. <clears throat> he said, um, their, their offerings sicken me and have become burdensome to me. And I was like, where's that from? And I, I got on my phone and she was like, babe, put your phone up. <laughs> I said, babe, I just, I feel like I got a word. And, and it was Isaiah 113. We'll go there in a minute. And I said, babe, this is the word that I'm hearing him say, like, like offer no more your useless offerings. They sicken me and have become burdensome to me. And I'm like, that's it, baby. That's what I'm feeling right now. Pastor, the next song, the chorus was sing a little louder. And my wife looked at me because she knows how the Lord speaks to me. Uh, I don't get words like this all the time, but that was a for sure prophetic moment. And for about the next five minutes, we listened to the body of Christ say, sing a little louder. The Sunday after we just co-signed. See, Roe v. Wade was the hand, that was the, 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 the choice, the vote of a handful of Americans, the Supreme Court. But that vote, whether abortion would be a part of our, our identity as a state, that was every believer had a vote. Every citizen over 18 had a choice, and we chose Barabbas. How many know that's different than Roe v. Wade? The, the, the consequences and, and the weight of that is different, and we ought to feel that. But I don't know if we do, Pastor. We just sing over it. Man, that, that was a horrible loss, but hey, let's, we got to move forward. God's still on the throne. And we still suck. Are y'all hearing this preacher today? So I, uh, I leave church that day. And um, first of all, I woke up that morning, that Sunday. Uh, and uh, the thing, uh, straight out of bed at 3 o'clock in the morning, that Sunday morning. And the first thing it was, all the years of Bible college, all the years of life coaching, all the years of Christian counseling, all the years of prophetic conferences, all the years of seminary, and we don't have enough sense as the body of Christ to get our tail out of bed and show up and just check on the ballot, let's save the children. That was the only thing on the ballot, right? Life and marijuana, <laughs> which has the same effect on children. We ain't going to go there. How many hours does it take? How many more sermons do we need to just say we can't kill babies? We can. Well, what if, we, what if she's poor? I was poor, but I couldn't kill her. We got to work something out in, in society when, when, when mothers can't take care of their children and fathers are, are absent. We got to figure something else out. And that was really what the church was supposed to do. That's where hospitals came from. When the need of the people was there, God always creates a solution in the body. But when the body becomes the problem, God forbid. God forbid. That night after church, the next morning was Monday. I woke straight up out of bed again, 3 o'clock in the morning, which is rare because I get up at 5, so I'm, uh, I need my sleep. And... Um, I wake straight up, 3 o'clock in the morning. And I said, okay, Lord, I'll pray. So I go downstairs. I pray, you know, I'm tired, blah, 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 blah. Lord, forgive us, God. God, forgive us. There's blood on our hands, Lord. Forgive us. And I go back to bed. I get in the car. I'm heading to work. I see a text on my phone. It said, uh, remember Isaiah is coming in to shadow us uh, at the job. It was from Troy McIntosh. Those of you are familiar with Troy. Uh, he's over our education, backpack bill, all that. But the first line on my text, remember Isaiah. 
And I said, oh, I should have studied that out. Isaiah 113. I forgot. I just prayed. The next morning, Tuesday morning, straight out of bed, like 315. I get up, I pray. But I forget. I'm on the way to work. My wife says, what was that verse that God gave you Sunday? I'm on my way to work. I said, Isaiah 14. She said, it's crazy. My secretary, she's a crisis pregnancy center director. She, I got this, the screenshots on my phone if y'all want to see it after church. She said, that my, my secretary just sent me, tell David to read this scripture. I think it'll encourage him. Isaiah 1, 14. There's 66 books in the Bible, family. 66 chapters in Isaiah. I said, Lord, forgive me after. I forgot. The next morning, I get up straight without an alarm, 3 o'clock in the morning. I open up the book, and this is what the, past, the uh, passage says. <sighs> Isaiah 13. Bring no more futile sacrifices. Incense is an abomination to me. The new moons, the Sabbaths, and the calling of assemblies, church. I cannot endure iniquity and s sacred meetings. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They trouble me. Everybody say, why? why? See, we can't just read this. Why, God? Why does church disgust you so back then? What was going on? Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They are trouble to me. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear you. Why? Everybody say why. why? Here's the why. Here's the why. Your hands are full of blood. I studied that out. What do you mean your hands? I've read this over and over again, Pastor. Pastor. Your hands are full of blood. When you lift your hands, even in worship, to sing over this, they disgust me. Why? Because there's blood on them. Are y'all hearing this preacher? I studied it out. It took me to Psalm 106, 35. In, in the chapter here, uh, the Lord had just delivered the people. He parted the Red Sea. The people walked over in fear, but in victory. As they walked on dry land, the Egyptians behind them. How many know that's a victory? Yeah. Come on, this isn't just you getting a new job, family. This is the Lord parted the Red Sea. Imminent death was coming. The Lord parted the Red Sea. They walk across on dry land. And when the last foot hit dry land in, the free, in, in Canaan land, the promised land, the, and the Lord took away their enemies. This is where we are right now. But as soon as those jokers get on the other side, verse 19, they made a calf. And worship the molding image. They forgot God, their Savior. Verse 21. Verse 23. Therefore, he said he would destroy them had not Moses, his chosen one, stood before him in the breach to turn away the wrath, lest they be destroyed. Verse 35. But then they mingled with the Gentiles. And learned their works. This is where the blood on your hands comes from. But they mingled with the Gentiles and learned their works. Everybody say, learn their works. Everybody say, learn their ways. They served their idols. Convenience. Do y'all know 97% of abortions are for convenience sake? Yes. 97%. Not health of the mother. Convenience. I can't afford it. Dad ain't going to stick around. I got other things to do. My career. Yes. Convenience. That's our God now. That's always been the God of Gentiles. Jesus. Yeah. Yes, it is. But they served their idols, which became a snare to them. They even sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons and shed innocent blood. The blood of their sons 
and the blood of their daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan. Do you know why they did that? Everybody say, why? See, that was the custom of the Canaanites to offer up children to certain gods so that these gods would give them fertile harvests so that if they have a fertile harvest, they make more money. If you have a fertile harvest, you don't have to work as hard. It's convenience. It's always been convenience. Are you with me, family? Thus they were defiled by their own works and played the harlot by their own deeds. And the Lord said, this is where you are, son. This is where we are. It wasn't about losing or winning an election. It was realizing, how many know when you go to, when you, if you fall over sick right now, they call an EMT in here and the first thing they do is they look for vital signs. Issue one was a vital sign for the body of Christ in the state of Ohio. 30, we spent money right after issue one was over. We spent money on more polling to find out what was the story so that we can go educate the other states that are being hit with the same thing. And we're going to put out this statement here in a minute, but the, the key thing that stuck out to me, family, was 38, you know, as soon as issue one was over, here's what I heard for a week in these interviews. David, can you believe the left? <laughs> can you believe this Biden administration? <laughs> Can you believe these liberals? Man, they put out these disgusting commercials that were just full of lies. The left are just liars. That's why issue one passed. Is that, is that right? Do you realize 38% of those that voted yes for issue one were not just Christians, but evangelical weekly church attending believers? 38%. Another third never showed up to voice their opinion of what God holds so very dear, including you when you were in your mother's womb. Yes. It's a vital sign. It's a vital sign. And he gives us, he suggests to us um, where we go from here, back in Isaiah. He says in verse 16, wash your hands, make yourself clean. Don't just sing over it. Don't just move on to the next day. Don't just move on to the next conference, the next election, the next anniversary, the next holiday. The body of Christ in the state of Ohio said life is so useless and worthless that we're not even going to get up and vote. And if we do, we're going to vote to kill them. How many will go to that church? But we are the church. And we can't just sit and say, well, my 14 people, we, we did the right thing. No, 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 no. Judgment came on a nation. And, and like it said in, in Psalm, but for Moses, I'd have destroyed all of you. In Isaiah, he said it this way. Unless the Lord of hosts had left us a small remnant, he would have become like, we would have become like Sodom. And we'd have been made like Gomorrah. I had never seen. And I think I said this last time. I've never seen more unity in the body of Christ than with issue one. The remnant was more unified than I have ever seen it, Pastor. I think you said that too. The, the, the Catholics, everybody. I had black folks weeping, registered Democrats at the altar, weeping. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. 12% African-American in the state of Ohio, but 48% of the abortions are ours. Enough is enough. God, forgive me. They voted yes on issue one, many of them, that, that we could reach. We just didn't have the millions of dollars to get that message out to that demographic. 
because the GOP doesn't think that they matter. Oh well, 90, 90, 90% of them vote Democrats, so why invest in that black demographic? Because they matter. Because they are being exploited and have been for years. Family, we were pro-life when y'all was trying to kill us. <laughs> and the slave camps and all that. Pro-life all the way up until like the mid-60s. When Jesse Jackson, who was a pro-life speaker for National Right to Life. I mean, one of my favorite pro-life people was Jesse Jackson until he ran for president on a ticket that was pro-abortion. So he flipped and other ministers sold out just like he did. And here we are today killing our own babies. The Klan wished they'd have been as successful. It was a moral imperative that we say something in the state of Ohio to all of us. Are you with me, family? Here is what the Lord says that we need to do today. Wash your hands, make yourself clean, put away your evil doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Yes. Everybody say, stop it. Stop it. First, we got to stop it. Stop making selfish decisions, even if it takes the life of another. Amen. But I got to go to college. I got to, but I'm a single mom. I'm a, do you realize we were poor? When I was a teen father, chose to marry my wifey at 18, 19 years old, moved into the hood. God provided a home and with every, no degree, neither one. She dropped out of college. I dropped out of college. And with every child, our income went up to this day, no college degree. And I'm working like for people that's got three and four degrees, <laughs> never been qualified for anything God has called me to. I don't care about your convenience. Your degrees, if it costs somebody their life, you are not that dope that you get to kill somebody because you feel like it. Not without consequence anyway. We've got laws for murder. Murder is the taking of an innocent life. Tell me what abortion is if that's not what it is. Your value is not predicated on whether I want you or not. Whether I like you or not, you are who you are with the enable of rights. Yes. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The first of these is life, though. Yes. But even the body was bought by 15 and 30 second commercials of, you know, what if somebody was raped? Give me one other area that the value of a human being is predicated by the idiot father that conceived them. My father was a dope dealer. Does that predicate my value? No. Come on, no, no. Do I not get life Come on. in the womb because my dad was an idiot? Come on. What, if, what if she's raped, though? Two wrongs don't make a right, baby. That's what my grandmother told me. Yes. Family, we got to get our worldview corrected. Amen. You don't need another Bible study for this. Amen. This was the most basic of decisions. This was the most basic of choices. And we failed. Wash your hands. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Don't idolize them, Planned Parenthood. Rebuke the oppressor. They are not the hero. 80% of their sinners are in economically disadvantaged communities of color. We're being exploited. And before you start calling black folks and Hispanics idiots, didn't the scripture say that Satan was the most craftiest of yeah. angels and that he often conceals himself as an angel of? Be careful how you judge another group of people because you're an idiot too. Your righteousness is a filthy rags too. On your best day, you're a sheep too, following the butt of the one in front of you. Many times of destruction until God comes in and swoops us up and redeems us from the penalty of our own sin. Yes. 
and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Come now and let us reason together. Stand to your feet, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. God, would you forgive us? God, would you forgive us, God, of our grievous sins? Father, would you convict us of this sin that we have just done? Father, there is literally blood. Well, I didn't even vote. That's a choice. If Zechariah chose not to show up and, and ask for a tablet and say, his name is John, then he was choosing to let the neighbors speak for him and call him Zechariah. That's a choice. And there's blood on our hands, Father. God, help us to wash. God forbid we just come home from work stinking and, and, and say, God, cleanse me. No, we have to get up out of bed, go turn on the water, get in the tub, and get this filth off of us. Help us to walk in obedience, to cleanse ourselves of this grievous sin, God. Help us to stop blame shifting. like heathen politicians do, lying and deceiving. God, it is I who have sinned you and no other. I have sinned you. I have sinned before you and you alone. God, help us to develop sermons full of the truth of life. And how precious it is to you. God, I, I've never felt you more grieved than that week, Lord. Literally shook me out of bed three times to say, this is my word for the church. God, cleanse this prophet, Lord. God, help us to say, well, I've done my part. While millions are being slaughtered in our land. Help us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, family, for putting up with me.